What is up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Rat Potential YouTube channel. We are going to run the compression tester today because we got fancy parts from the compression tester guy. So, if you don't know what a rotary compression tester is or looks like, I'm going to show you real quick, and then we're going to go compression test the race car, and then I'm also, after we do that, I'm going to give some background on the race car and why I'm selling it and stuff like that. So kind of a twofer. So, rotary compression tester right here. The old sensor right here. What actually happened is uh, we took this apart, so unthreaded this little collar, and the wires are broke in here. So, we got us a fancy new one, and apparently there was an update to the design of this, which is good. So right here, fancy new one. Looks like it has some knurling on it and uh, some spare O-rings, which we like. We'll keep those in the bag. Boom! How about that? So the thing that I don't like about this design is like this. When you're imagine you're holding this still and you spin this, it twists up right here. And I know the intent is to let this flop around. But some people are going to put this in and try to twist it in with the end of this. So it would be better if like the plug was actually on the sensor. Um, but I know for packaging and stuff and making the sensor work, that's what you got to have sometimes. So we need our new sensor, the fresh plug. Apologize for the shake cam. We're doing all this with one hand. We got Magic Miracle ratchet and socket. So the banana, the race car. 1980 RX-7 SCCA Club Rally Car originally American Rally Association Rally Car Rally America Rally Car you name it race car it is original to like how it would have been probably mid 2000s so it's definitely been repainted from its original yellow um, the interior looks to be mostly of the original red <coughs> however it's been raced and it's been driven and it's an off-road car so don't expect you know the car is not your typical track car that's been on the road um, racing road courses and like maybe has some cone damage and stuff no like this is a dirt car so like you're gonna see you know like fenders are all rolled flat I mean it's seen it's seen some stuff but uh, overall I mean like aesthetically for a vintage race car, I would rate it at like a solid, you know, I mean, cars in general, I would say, would be like a solid five, five and a half condition wise. As far as the uh, like actual paint, now if you want to know like structural, the car is not rusty. Like, it has surface rust underneath it, but it's not actually rusty. Like, it's not gonna, you can't poke holes through the frame rails. Like, you can jack it up on any point. Um, nothing's gonna come off like I mean it's solid but it is a dirt car so it's got you know dirt and stuff on the bottom of it I mean that's about normal for one of these I challenge you to find a rally car that has competed in more than we'll say like 10 events that still has a complete coat of paint in the fender wells that hasn't been repainted you know like it, that's just that's just not how they are so four hood pins pop the hood off we'll get this old compression tester going. You're going to see this hood is literally just a hood skin. So there's nothing to it underneath there. It's just the skin. Set that guy over here. Um, power plant wise, street ported 12A, um, but if the Rally America people for group two or whatever, um, the class is running is supposed to be unported. But if you get somebody to contest you on it, well then, they got bigger fish to fry, or you're a mega good driver. Because it's still, poor. okay, let me put it in perspective. A stock port 12A rotary is going to make probably 85 to 100 wheel horsepower. The street ported 12A rotary is probably going to make 140 wheel horsepower. Okay. Now, the reason that rule is in place is because, for example, my full bridge port car down here, probably makes 220 to the tire. Now that's like a big, big port job, so they don't want you to have that much power in group two, which is um, limited rear wheel drive, or limited two wheel drive. 
it's the classic build. But like if you take it to a NASA route, they'll probably just let you run it. So um, go ahead and pull a plug. As you can see, the engine was 100% cold right now. Still touch everything. Haven't even started it in a couple days. So you do this with the trailing plugs pulled. I like to pull both of them off just because it lets the starter crank over faster if it's not making compression on the rear rotor too. Make sure you disconnect your ignition. So we're just going to set the dizzy cap down over here. Let's go ahead and pop both these plugs out. And uh, we'll give this thing a shot. I did try to compression test this like a couple weeks ago. and the com Or I guess a week ago. And the sensor was bad for the tester. So I had to wait. Um, and thank you Johnny and Steve for getting a new sensor shipped out here. So just got it today, which is awesome. Um, so I put this car together like three years ago. Um, basically it was one of my like, lifelong dreams to race rally and this was the car I did it in. So I got it from a guy in Oklahoma and I know the full history of the car. So um, if you want to know original owner, builder, I'm going to get you in touch with them because the original owner is a super cool dude and I originally had offered the car back to him for sale. Um, but just kind of with everything that's going on in the world, it wasn't entirely, or he wasn't entirely in the best position to pick it up. So, if the original owner gets it back from the auction for cheap, that'd be a good deal, right? So, I do understand, you know, I have way more money in this thing than what it's worth, um, but that's every race car. But I also want to make sure that it goes to somebody who's actually going to appreciate and use it. Um, not that I don't, but as you see, I have a ton of other cars here, so it uh, it kind of has sat around the past couple years. Not like sat as in never gets driven, but sat around as in I don't really have the money or the means to go race it right now, so I'd rather see it go to somebody who can actually race it or at least use it. So here we go. I'm just going to set this up here. You're going to see it says, begin cranking. So that's just what we'll do. Neutral, power on, and crank. So, what those numbers mean, you're going to see right next one 756760 at 145, and the corrected is 113, 101, 90. So, which, what those two numbers mean, compression is dependent on the RPM of the engine. So if you have a slow moving starter, it's not going to read a lot of compression, right? So this tester factors in RPM, which is determined by the amount of compression pulses it sees, and it has a chart and it pulls data and, and corrects the values. So I'm going to go ahead and run it again. This is the front rotor here. Bang, ba dang. Correct the values. Right there at 100. So, pretty healthy. I have never had any starting issues with this motor, hot or cold. It always seems to run flawless. I did pull this from my daily driver. And I would say that the, the motor probably has about 20 to 25,000 miles of actual driving on it. Um, it was rebuilt right before I got my car um, by one of the local guys in southern Indiana. So, yeah, it's just a good. R5 12A and the R5 is the big plates so this is a great motor if you want to go a full bridge go full NAR super awesome and I've been running this setup this carburetor and this engine in my street car and this with zero issues for about five years and it probably saw the most RPM and abuse in the race car but like street car wise it was literally my daily driver so I'm gonna go ahead and swap this over to the rear rotor and we'll get the numbers for you there so, trying to be real careful with the sensor now so we don't twist these wires up because it sucked to have that other one come apart. You don't really think you use it a lot until the fatigue life of the parts actually wears out. So, one of the other super neat things with this car is that it has an RX-8 6-speed transmission in it. Um, it is a Series 1 transmission, so it's not like the super bulletproof strong one. However, compared to a stock 12A 5-speed, or like just the stock RX-7 5-speed, this transmission tolerates 
high RPM shifts a lot better than the uh, 12A transmissions do. And I actually broke second gear twice in my first gen. So, and I'm pretty sure I got third gear is on its way out right now. So we're on the rear rotor now, cold as well. 65, 69, 72, dead even, right at 100. So I'll run it again, just so you all can see. 66, 71, 64, right there. So what I am going to do is I will put them on the screen, um, or actually no, I'll just film it. I'm going to go ahead and put the plugs back in, fire this thing up, let it warm up, and we'll do the compression numbers again so you can see hot versus cold. Um, and you'll just get to see me cold start it here real quick. So let's do that. All right, so like I said, still very cold engine. Hasn't been ran. You just saw me do the compression test on that stuff. Cold. We're just going to fire it up right here. So it has been sitting for, like I said, a week since I drove it. Um, and mainly it's just been like a fun rally cross yard car for me. So key on, ignition switch on. And uh, I usually give it like two pumps, excuse me, and then start cranking it and then pump as needed from there. Um, the fuel pumps are wired to an oil pressure switch, so it does take a little bit of cranking to get the fuel pumps to kick on if the car bowls are dry. So, one thing too, um, it does take just a tad bit. Hold idle. Oh yeah, there it goes. I guess it's warm enough out. Sometimes whenever you have like a warm-ish day, the holly choke won't turn on. So it doesn't entirely like to idle right away. Now when it's freezing cold outside and you pump the car, or pump the throttle, the choke will kick on right away and it'll idle like 2,000 just like a regular holly should. So, you can hear right here. Dead quiet. Hers like a kitten. The car does have a fully functional oil metering pump system. And then I also run pre-mix in the car in addition to that. So when you don't run pre-mix and you just run the oil metering pump, it doesn't smoke at all. But uh, generally I have run one ounce per gallon of pre-mix in addition to the oil pump. That's a lot of pre-mix. I usually change the plugs pretty often. But um, I don't know, you might see like if you're sitting there pumping it and it floods out or something. Um, if you try to muscle car start it and you just sit there and pump, 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 it, it probably will get mad at you. So just be aware of that. But I'm gonna go ahead and let it warm up. We can do a little walk around here. I don't wanna make this video super long, but um, basically black doors, all that. Um, I know in my previous video talking about this, whenever I did go into the ditch um, at Southern Ohio, or Southern Ohio, at Show Me Rally, Basically what I meant by busted up the front end, I feel like it kind of knocked my toe out of alignment. I did do a tape measure alignment back on it and had to give it like a quarter turn on the tie rods. Um, but then also it busted up my front balance. So it's kind of all like, it's rally car, race car patched back in there. You know, the plastic piece in the center has always just been zip tied in. Um, and then, and it's got a rock screen in it too to protect your radiator. Then this is my skid plate. So this thing runs all the way Basically, oh, I'm stuck on the siding. Basically, it runs all the way from the uh, front of the engine, um, basically the bottom of the radiator, right here, all the way to right here. And you won't be able to see through the floor um, with the skid plate on. So, this is your fuel filter. There's your oil filter right there. Big electric fan, dual pass radiator, air horns. These are the relays for the lights. All the lights are on quick connects up here, right inside there, you can just reach them. Two bolts and the whole front light thing comes off. Looks way cooler with them on. It does have a three-piece, um, I don't know what brand it is or whatever, but it's a three-piece fiberglass wing. It is like full-blown race car screwed to the car, just so you know. Um, but that's how it was when I got it. And then back here in the back, pumps and everything are down underneath this. There's a big steel compartment. Like I said, I'll link the other video. I filmed it in way better light. Um, batteries mounted there, tool kit, 
spill kit, triangles, jack, basically everything you need <coughs> um, to go racing. The one thing that I will say is you definitely want to consult with whatever sanctioning body you're racing with. Consult their rules. Make sure everything that's done on this car meets it. It hasn't been in competition for three years. Now, given that's not a long time, but rules do change. Change, so check it out. I know for one of them, for sure, there's supposed to be an A-pillar bar um, for like American Rally Association racing. So that's one thing that like I have a fabricator here that we can add it. Um, but basically just a bar that goes from here to the bottom of the, the front pillar. So this is a more modern style cage. It doesn't have a halo or anything. It, it's got regular down tubes. It, um, it passed tech just fine in 2017. So I'm gonna let this warm up and we'll come back and do some hot numbers. All right guys, here's the car running. Still purring away. We got 180 on the temp gauge. Oh, you can't really see it. 160-ish on the oil temp gauge. So I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, well here, I can show you. Put oil pressure, solid 20 PSI, 25 PSI oil pressure to idle. Goes right up as soon as you know the throttle. So, get pumped. I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off. And, uh, I'm going to get the compression tester hooked up. I'm going to run to the shop and grab some gloves real quick. And then we'll uh, get this plugged. Alright guys, gloves on. We got the plugs out. Fire the tester up here. I'll go ahead and show you again. That, uh... Oh. Still 180, 200 on the temp gauge. I didn't have the fans running so it is a little warm. Right here. Right there, boom, hot cranks, front rotor, we'll run it one more time, once it cycles back. There you go. I don't know why that read zero RPM, let's try it again. There we go. All right, guys, I'm gonna swap this over to the rear. We get going, dang, it is hot. All right, rear rotor, she's reset. Focus, same deal. There you go, there's your numbers. We'll go through the whole cycle and I'll run it again. All right guys, so that's the compression numbers and the banana. Um, I mean, I would say those are pretty average numbers seeing all the rotary stuff around here. Um, I mean, like we've got cars that sit in the 60s to 70s corrected and they run like a dream, have been for years. Charles' truck, you know, one of them was, we tested a while back, and his, like, corrected numbers were 50, 50, 70, something, you know, weird stuff, and it still ran good. I 100% trust this motor. It's definitely by far the best running engine that I have here. Um, so, and if it gives you fits, I mean, I can build engines. There's tons of people I can always hook you up with that can build engines, but I will say, you don't, uh, you don't be trying to do, uh, we'll just say like this YouTube stuff or, or building engines for people um, and stuff like that and try to sell people junk. So if it's junk, if it's going to break, you know I'm not going to sell you something that's going to break. So just know that I fully trust this vehicle. Now given I am not going to give you a warranty with this car. It's, car, it's an old car. Stuff happens. You know, but as a car buyer you should know. You know, it's old stuff. It's good now. Y'all see it. 
everything's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and put the plugs back in it. I will hot start it for you here in a second, and then uh, we'll close out the video. All right, guys, so everything's hooked back up. Hop inside here. Oh, might need my foot. Ow, Jesus. Small car probs. Power's on. Mission's on. Ready to go. And there she is. Settling right back into her idle. You can see. Still hot. Oil temps. Still hot. Still making wonderful oil pressure. Sorry for the bad lighting, but horns work, lights work, LED lights, big killer lights, reverse lights, service lights, turn signals don't light up on the blinker, but you can hear it flashing, right turn. It's all there. All the substance for y'all to have a badass rally car. And uh, it's one of those ones I'm going to hate to see it go. I mean, this has been a great part of my rotary experience, a great part of my automotive experience, just running rallies, meeting all the people, you know, at these events is super awesome. Plus the time I got to spend with my dad, teaching him how to do stage notes, and then also just riding along. I mean, it's, um, you know, my past, whatever, didn't get super crazy tons of time with him. He did his best, but this was one of my most cherished times I got to spend with my dad racing my car. So... I hope whoever gets it, I'm for sure going to stay in touch with you, and uh, hopefully it goes to a good home. It is going no reserve, so um, you might be able to get it for a good price, but you know, I just want what's fair value for the car and hope that uh, somebody can use it. So, thanks for watching. Keep it red.